Good afternoon. Welcome to Aussie's webinar presentation on how to effectively navigate through the Seats and Squire system. My name is Yvonne Smith. I'm the manager of the Aussie non-public payment team and the Medicaid team at Aussie. Here with me today is also Ms. Jackie Corsi, who is your Squire contact. Uh, Dr. Edgar Stewart, who is the manager of the ASI non-public monitoring team, and we have our IT professionals, Ms. Linda Callahan, who is the technical manager for the SEAT system, and Mr. Chris Taylor, who is the technical manager for Squire. So, um, today's webinar, we're going to walk through these two systems, um, but just to uh, ensure that everybody can hear us at least, um, please use the chat feature on the side of your uh, right side of your the right margin and let us know if you cannot hear us. We'll pause for a few minutes. Again, this is, if you cannot hear us, please write that in the chat line. And if you are having technical difficulties, everybody just please check your audio settings on your personal computer setup. Make sure that it's turned up and, um, and we'll go from there. Okay, seeing none, we'll move forward. Okay, today's agenda, we'll be talking about what is Seats and Squire, what's new in Seats and Squire. We will provide you with Aussie's expectation for system use for this school year. We'll then provide an actual demonstration of the seat system. We'll take some questions, and then we'll do a demonstration of the choir, Squire <laughs> system, and then we'll take questions at the end. Okay, what is SEATS and Squire? SEATS is the Special Education Attendance Tracking System. It's a web-based system that non-public schools can utilize to record the daily attendance of students. Squire stands for the Staff Qualifications Information Repository. It's a quick-based quick system which non-public schools utilize to record and maintain staff information, staff credentials, staff licensure information, and also it's a place where you can actually load copies of the license documentation. What's new in Seats and Squire? Okay, many of you uh, probably have already some experience with using the two systems, but we've done some upgrades to the system. And we did those upgrades based on your feedback and some of the frequently asked questions. So as a result, both systems are much more easier to navigate and to navigate in fewer steps than was previous, previously there. Um, in particular, in seats, we've added additional color-coded flags to alert you to different attendance thresholds, and there are two new reports in seats, which we will um, demonstrate for you later. In Squire, what we did was to consolidate a lot of the different sections so that you will have fewer input steps to um, be able to put in the data that you're required to have. There are some additional uh, reports that we added. And there's a new section for um, just program and staff information in general. Aussie's expectations. Okay, as you know, um, most of you should be familiar with these three systems, Seat, Squire, and SEDS, which is known as the Special Education Data System, also referred to as EZIAP. These are your main systems for reporting uh, DC student data back to the DC education agencies and other entities. Um, so you all should be very familiar with it. You should be um, training your staff on the use of, of these systems. Each non-public school should have a point of contact established so that they, the point of contact, are attending all the OSI required trainings and are 
disseminating that information back in their schools and ensuring that their staff are up to date and aware of and using seat squire and feds on a, on a regular basis. So you may ask, why do we have you use these systems? Well, when you consistently use these systems in a timely manner, um, it will provide the DC LEAs and even yourself in, in, in some cases, um, it will provide a real-time uh, accounting of what's going on with the students. Um, as you know, we have a new initiative coming in January for non-public payments that uh, related service payments will require a service tracker entry in SEDS in order to get paid for that service. Um, so if you do this on an ongoing and regular basis, you won't get behind with that and it won't put your payments in jeopardy. Uh, so it's uh, using these systems are, are used for invoice submission reviews, for payments, and also for your non-public school monitoring visits and or inquiries. Uh, again, the more you use these systems, the less uh, the DC agencies will need to contact you directly to get this information because it'll be right there. Okay, seats. We're going to start our seat uh, overview and then have a actual uh, demonstration. I'd like to introduce to you Ms. Linda Callahan. Uh, again, she's the technical manager of SEATS. Uh, she is the person that you all contact to get access to SEATS, and she helps you through all your issues when you call in with help desk inquiries. Thank you, Yvonne. Hi, everyone. Um, let us go through the SEATS information. I have a couple of slides, and I'm going to take you directly into the program. Uh, we're going to look at the charter. SEATS has been around for about three years. So some of you have been using it consistently. Others may be stopped and or started and stopped, but we would like you to start using it on a regular basis. I'm going to give you some program highlights. The users, there are several user roles that you have, and I'm going to tell you what those roles are, users and functions, and how SEATS works. Because you're doing attendance daily, every day in the roster, grid for your students needs to have a code. So we're looking at recording the attendance entries every Wednesday and Friday. And then at the end of the month, you're going to the first, the last day of the month, you're going to actually submit that particular sheet. If you submit, after five days, it's going to lock. You have the opportunity to unlock it by calling the sending LEA. So if you made a mistake on one of the students, you need to contact the LEA that sent that student to your school. We're going to look at navigation and web pages. Uh, of course, my demonstration is coming up. And then some tr troubleshooting and help. We've got a lot of questions over the last three years. You know, people um, have some issues. So I kind of wrote those down in here, as well as there's an FAQ in the program itself. So I want you to just be aware there's a lot of help and um, work aids for you. CEATS is office response to the need to create a systematic method for collecting attendance information. This is a long sentence. For DC special education students who attend non-public programs. So we have this system that captures the attendance for non-public programs. Only non-public schools go into the CEATS program. Okay, LEAs don't go in there, but the reporting is available to LEAs. So they don't go into CEATS and you just enter your information. You can enter comments, documents, things like that. And that, that will uh, then translate. The LEAs can see this in a different venue, but they can see the information you enter. So some of the highlights of SEATS, it is a web-based program, so you can be anywhere, anytime, any place, as long as you have internet access. We preload the schools, the campuses, and the rosters. We get a feed every morning that gives us the rosters of the children that are in, or excuse me, the students that are in the non-public school. We also support documentation. When they have illnesses or they're out uh, on its absences, you can upload documentation to support that, as well as add any comments that you would require 
that the LEA may need or you may need in the future. We have weekly automated reminders. So if you do not enter your, excuse me, if you do not record, okay, that's like save, okay? The record means save. So when you save on uh, Wednesdays and Fridays, if you don't save on Friday, it's gonna give you an automatic email saying, hey, you're missing uh, your recording for X and X week. Uh, visual alerts when the absent thresholds are met. This is something we uh, beefed up uh, based on your all's comments. So now you have alerts for several different occasions. I'm gonna go through those when we go into the demonstration, but there's alerts for you. So when you see something, you can say, oh, maybe that child needs some help because they've been out for five days in a row or something like that. So it kind of helps you manage your children or your students and if there's issues, you can always contact the LEA, you guys get together, and maybe you can help them right at the beginning. Student entry date adjustments. So when we get the, uh, we get a feed with the roster in the morning. If it's a new student coming in, and their name may be in the roster, but they're actually not sitting in their seat. So we can have you adjust when they actually arrive at your school. So you don't have to worry about, you know, if, if uh, they do come in and you see them in the roster, you don't see them in their seat, they don't come in three, till three days later, you can make that adjustment easily. Locking and unlocking attendance, uh, which is the function of the sending LEA. Remember, you have a mixture of LEA uh, students in your school, typically. So LEAs are only responsible for the students that they send. So if you need to make adjustments to a student sent by, say, DCPS, you would contact DCPS. If there are students sent by another school, you would contact that school. We also have secure permission-based and password-protected access. And we have attendance reports. There's a series of reports in seats. And I don't know if you're familiar with SLED. Uh, SLED is the system that the LEA has access for information on students in schools. And that is where we actually uh, put your reports, uh, the seats reports are then translated into a report for SLED. Data views, again, what you see in seats is yours. You're non-public, you go in there. What the LEAs see, the LEAs go into uh, SLED to view the information that you entered in seats. Okay, this just quickly, uh, there's three uh, users types. We have the non-public program, which are you all, and we have schools and we have campuses for you. So a school user can see all campuses, a campus user can see only one campus. We have the local education agency, the LEA. These are the people that actually load the student files, not, not literally load them, but they will, set up their student information system to say this student is now in this non-public, okay? They're the ones that generate that information that we gather and put into your roster. Unlocking, they do the unlocking for their own children only or their own students only, and then view the reports. They can view the information that you put in seats. They can view that in SLED, including your comments, including the uploaded documents. And Aussie, of course, we view it, we support it, and we improve it. So we're there to uh, work with you guys to make things as easy as possible. This is how it works. Uh, the non-public campuses enter the daily attendance codes. There's a, there's a group of approved codes. You also will upload supporting documents and then make any comments that you need to make. Throughout that, there's visual alerts during the entry for new student entry dates, withdrawal dates, when, and when the student thresholds, absence thresholds are reached. So again, it's a very visual kind of system. You record the attendance Wednesday and Friday. Record, record. It's not the same as submit. You have to remember that. You're recording. And I think that uh, actually the pop-up message says, this is, you're recording, you're not submitting. So read those pop-ups. Submit attendance the last day of the current month. So once you have everything in there, you submit the attendance. You can recall the attendance if you see any changes you need to make. Now this is not like unlocked, 
And recall brings back the whole attendance and you can make any changes you need to do. Then after the fifth working day, it locks. And that's when you need to contact your local uh, education agency who has provided you with that student. Uh, Linda, maybe at this time would be a good time to let you guys know that, again, because of privacy, um, each LEA, each student is assigned to a specific LEA. So if you, for example, needed to have the attendance unlocked for your entire month, um, you would have to contact each LEA individually. I know that might sound burdensome, but it's because uh, each student is assigned to a specific LEA and say, for example, DCPS cannot unlock um, the attendance records for a student who, who's enrolled in a charter LEA. So just keep that in mind. If you need a, a, a total month unlock for something that applies to everybody, you've got to contact each LEA to have them unlock their students for you. Otherwise, you just contact the LEAs of the specific students that you need to have unlocked. Thank you, Evelyn. All right, to reiterate, we're recording attendance. This is a separate function than submit. So you record your attendance twice a week, Wednesdays and Fridays. Okay, so you hit, there's a record button. Remember, it's, it's like a save button. You're saving it, so you're recording it. Um, and then you get a weekly reminder. It will tell you if you're missing attendance for school XYZ and what week you're missing attendance. So we give you weekly reminders to kind of make you go back in there and, and fix, your, uh, fix your attendance. Okay, so again, this is recording. The next function, which is different, is submit. Okay, this is a monthly action. So the last day of the month after you put your codes in, and remember every single day needs a code. Okay, every single day. So you're gonna be putting this in, I would say put it in as you're going through the month, which is what most of our uh, non-pubs do. Uh, you're gonna submit it, you have a recall period. The recall will recall the entire attendance back, okay? And then you can make any changes you need to do. And then when you submit it, it actually, after the fifth day, it will lock, okay? The lock is when you have to contact the uh, LEAs uh, who are sending the students. If you have to make any changes to a particular student, you'll have to contact that sending LEA. Again, let's look at this, unlocking attendance records. It's important because if you do have to make changes, and, and as Yvonne said, if you have to make changes to several uh, students, you're gonna have to contact several LEAs. You may have to contact several LEAs. The non-public user submits a request to unlock attendance via email or you can call them to the LEA administrators. Uh, the non-public users identify the student record or records and respective respective campus LEA specific. Okay, remember LEA specific, you gotta call each one if you need to make any changes. The LEA administrator unlocks the attendance records for their students only. And then the non-public user updates the attendance and then you resubmit. Okay, after a lock and something is unlocked, when you submit it, after you've made your change, it automatically goes back into a locked status. Okay, so when you make your change, it goes back to lock. I'll show you that in a moment, what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm gonna go live here. Let's see, let me go back here. Uh, let me just give you one more, I forgot, one more slide. This is the address, seats login is HTTPS forward forward seats ACDC gov. This is your login screen and it is again accessed through IE and Chrome IE. You have to be like nine and above on IE to get into the system successfully. Okay, yeah, it's here. Okay, so this is the um, view of the login page for seats, and I'm going to add a username here. You'll have a username and a password. Typically, the usernames are your email addresses. Oops. 
Okay, the first page you come to is a welcome page. And I want you to look at this because if we do anything new in seats, we're gonna put it here, okay? So we've just made some uh, terrific enhancements to it. And you can see it here, we've lifted uh, some of the enhancements that we've made. So again, take a look at this. Make sure that you review this and, and see if there's anything new that you can use while you're putting your attendance in. Up in this top corner, you have different pages. The page you're going to be working in the most is your attendance page. Your attendance page then takes you into your campus or school dashboard. So I'm going to click on attendance. Now, uh, I want to thank the Community School of Maryland, Brookfield, Brookfield, Maryland, for letting us use your name up here, but I didn't use your students. Um, so what you're seeing here, if you are a campus, this is what you're going to see. One line here, and if you're assigned to that campus, that's what you're going to see. Down below is the dashboard. The dashboard is going to tell you what you've submitted, how, how uh, large your enrollment is for the current month. You can see current month is four up here and current month is four down here. The not submitted means you have not submitted the attendance for that particular month. You see that this individual did not submit for October. It's important that we take a look at this and I'll tell you why in a moment. Once you do submit, it goes into the submitted column. It kind of follows a nice workflow. Once it's locked after the fifth uh, business day, it's going to be locked and it's going to go into here. If you see the numbers here and you have to do something with them, that's when you have to get hold of the LEA. When the LEA unlocks the student for you, only that student will come into this unlocked column. So if you have four uh, students, one is DCPS, you have to make a change to DCPS, one will be in the unlocked column. Okay, so remember, it's not unlocking everything, it's just unlocking the students belonging to that particular LEA. Also, we give you some messages, select the school year to view only selected, so you can actually sort this by the current school year. So it makes it a little easier. Our school year does start in August, August 1st through July 31st. Um, when you're in here, let's see if there's something else I need. You have your school name, uh, tells you how who you're logged in as. So in here, I'm going to go into October, okay? So once you click on that, you're going to go into a roster view. And this roster has all of your students listed here, okay? And it also has the weekends marked off. It has any kind of uh, entry. For instance, if this last John Smith came in to this school on Friday the 13th, all of these days before Friday the 13th would be gray. Because we, again, we see the student come in to feed in the, in the morning and we pop them in the roster. But we do gray the days up to the point that they came in. If they, if he actually showed up on Monday, all you have to do is put a valid code for Monday. When you put a valid code, it will adjust those gray days. If you have any trouble with these, I, I have a, a lot of the non pups call me for assistance. I mean, I'm always there, so don't, even on weekends. Okay. <laughs> and it's true. <laughs> Yvonne said don't say that. Okay, let me make this a little bigger. How can I make this bigger? Oops. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger so you can see this a little better. Control plus. Okay. Oh, you got it. All right. So up here, okay, you have the codes that are valid codes to put in this grid. So we have a series of codes. If you have a holiday, it would be a non-school day. The non-school days fill vertically through the uh, roster. So if this is, a, for instance, if Monday the 9th was a non-school day, you key in the, not the, le the letter, and then when you hit tab, it fills in every student for that day, because they figure if it's a non-school day for one, it's a non-school day for everyone. Okay, um, absences, illnesses, medical, out of school uh, suspension. Present, of course, is the one that you uh, 
uh, would use when the child when the student is in. If they start accumulating days, let me look down here. Let me show you what this is. Down in this corner, you see this fifth unexcused absence reach throughout the school year. If you look up into this uh, students, you've got five unapproved, unexcused absences here. So the fifth one is going to turn blue. If he has five more this month, next month, a month after, whenever he accumulates that next five, it will then turn green. Okay, so we're giving you visuals. So when you see this, you say, hey, what's wrong with John Smith's six? Is there something we can help him with? We also have consecutive absences, all right? So consecutive absences would mean that, like here, I'm gonna put UA here, okay? So this will say blue, that's five, six, and then continue, this month, next month, following month. If they're consecutive, you're going to have different color coding as well. If they're consecutive and um, they start out as, let's see, E, X, E, X, E, X, oops, E, X. I'm just showing you the lovely colors we put in here. Very visual. Okay, seventh consecutive absence reached, it turns purple. So now you know this child has been out for seven consecutive times. When you start with your actually them coming in, it resets the consecutive counter. So they start another uh, consecutive count, okay? The only counter that does not restart are your unexcused absences throughout the school year because we're taking into consideration, you know, 10 months out of the year. So these do not reset. They reset on August 1st, which is the beginning of our school year in seats. That's when they will reset. So you will see these blue markers, and then if they reach the tenth, you're going to see green forever if they keep having unexcused absences. Let me show you up here. At the very end of this grid, you have a comment section. You can click on comment and add any comment you want. Okay. And you can click accept like that. You can browse and upload your documentation. It's just like a, 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 a Windows browse feature. Nothing new. Uh, I'm going to put my frequently asked questions. Okay, so you do that. So we put a comment here and we have this information here. Okay. So now I'm going to record this. Now see, reading, Click OK to record the entries. This command does not submit your monthly attendance. So remember that. It's two separate functions. Say OK. And then when it resets itself, you're going to see the word comment in red, which means there's a comment there. And then you're going to see the uploaded document you had here. And you can actually you can remove it or you can download it from here. So keep your documents in here. And you'll have a record month to month of student absences. All right, from here we can also print attendance and see if there's anything else. We've got the help desk number here in case you need to call them while you're sitting in this particular uh, grid. And we also have a note up here, attendance must be recorded every Wednesday and Friday of the current week. Okay, so let me submit. I think everything's fine, don't you? Mm, maybe not. Okay, we do have a message that pops up if you are missing any codes within the grids. It tells you who it is and where the missing codes are, what days they're missing. So we give you that because you can't submit unless every single row, uh, day code is in there. So say, okay, so let's look and see. Well, we missed one here, and we missed one here, here, here. Here, 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 here. Let's try to submit again. Still missing two. So, okay, because these grids get really long if you have a lot of students, so you want to make sure that when you submit, at least it prompts you and tells you where you need to make the changes. I'm going to say B and B there. Okay, right now I'm going to record. Okay, I'm not going to submit right now. I'm going to show you why in just a second. Click OK to record, does not submit. Remember that, record does not. 
Then I'm going to cancel and I'm going to go back to my dashboard. All right, you see that I did not submit October, but I have the submit key, uh, submit button in October. Let's look at November. When you look at November, you don't have a submit or a record button. The reason is you never submitted October. You have to submit the previous month. Um, the only exception to that is August. Because our end of year is July, it's not looking for a July entry, it's starting with August. That's the only time it deviates from this. You cannot submit unless you've submitted the previous month's attendance. Okay, so let's go back and we'll do a submit so you can see what it looks like. Again, use these codes because if you don't, it's error, the system will say, uh uh, invalid. Okay. So not submitted. Okay, so now let's submit and see what we get. Warning, please remember to upload supporting documentation for excused absences. Again, we tell you, we walk you through this. Uh, click OK, then cancel to update the information. That's your attachments. If you don't have the attachments for your excused absences, your uh, court, your uh, bereavement, your illness, things like that, they want you, we want you to upload those documents. The only caveat here is you have to upload them all in one file. In other words, if, I'm going to get back out there. Okay. In other words, if John Smith was out uh, medical one day, court one day, and illness one day throughout the month, you have three papers. You have three excused papers. You have to, you have to scan those into one file upload that one file, okay? That's the only thing. So you're gonna upload the file probably the last day of the month when you finish your attendance, because then you'll have everything throughout the month. So again, scan it into one file and then upload it. You can only get one chance to upload. Uh, here's the, you know, in accordance with blah, 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 submit by you're assigning this agreement electronically. Basically we're saying you are guaranteeing this uh, uh, this uh, attendance is correct. Let's say submit. Okay. Now, you see, it went over to lock because it's way past due. So anytime you submit after the five-day business, it's going to shoot over to lock immediately. So let's look at November one more time, and then we'll be done with this. Lo and behold, November now has record and submit. Okay, so just remember, if you don't see these buttons, you didn't do last month's attendance. Okay. Um, all right, I think I covered everything I possibly can in here. So I'm going back to the presentation. Okay, what we're going to talk about now is the report. I'm going to show you some of the reports that you have available to you in seats. Let me uh, just do this real quick, go back into here, just to... These are the reports I'm talking about right here. It's under the reports tab, all of these reports right in this area. Okay. All right. <clears throat> the first one is the monthly attendance report. And this attendance report will show you the actual monthly grid. And with any of the uh, absence, uh, oops, sorry, any of the absence um, codes, so the color coding would be in here. If you look at this very first line, this is this gentleman, UA, he hit the five from the beginning of the year um, absence. If you can see that little UA right there, okay? Um, I don't see any UAs here, so it must have been previous months he was collecting them. Right? This is, in this case, the person has a UA and he hit the green UA. He had another unapproved absence on this date. Remember, they stay green until he hits the um, 10th, and then it'll turn blue. So we haven't hit the 10th yet for this gentleman. But it does stay green because it alerts you. It's saying this guy has five, you know, five absences from the first of the year, and he's continuing to do it. So he hasn't reached the 10th yet, but he's getting close. 
Um, here's your consecutive. If you reach 15 consecutive absences, and we don't count the non-school days, you'll get red. So that's why this is so colorful. It's a really a quick visual on um, what you're seeing here. Also gives you the total unapproved absence count, the total excused absences, the total present. Okay, it tells you if there's a document uploaded. You can't see the document here. You'd have to go back into seats, into the roster grid to see it. But you see yes, yes, no. So if you need to look at that document, you have to go back. Okay, and here, this is Yvonne. I just wanted to um, highlight for you here. Um, again, Linda said we got a nice, nice, pretty color coding going on to alert you to the uh, absence thresholds. Um, also, what you can't see on the screen, but at the bottom of this page is the, the legend for what the different codes mean. But in regards to invoice payment, this, is, this would be a good report for you because um, it's going to show you the different thresholds according to our payment, our payment requirements, and just according to attendance in general. So when the student is at that five-day uh, continuous absence, um, those are your flags to contact the LEA and let them know and start setting up the uh, attendance intervention processes. And um, what you can't see here is as you build towards 10, it shows you different colors. But we picked red to say, uh-oh, something's, something's wrong here. Red is alert. So once you get red, you should have uh, at least by that time either had a meeting or you're scheduling an attendance meeting so that when you submit your uh, invoice for payment, if you want to be considered for payment for these days, you should have, by the time the invoice is submitted, uh, held these meetings, had the attendance intervention plan uploaded and said so that when you do bill, all the payment team has to do is to look and said, see those meeting notes, and you're good to go. But these color codes were set uh, for you for that purposes, so you had that alert uh, prior to either the invoice team contacting you and or the monitoring team contacting you for any purposes. So please utilize these tools. These are here for you. It helps you to um, navigate everything else that you need going forward. Thanks, Yvonne. All right, so let's look at another report. This is the attendance summary report, and this is by student for a particular month. Uh, right now we're doing, or a range of dates, so you can do it for several months, but right now we're looking at March uh, of this year. We're looking at how many present days, so how many total present days, how many total absent days that this particular uh, individual had within that month. So this one is, they were there all month, 19, 19. So this kind of, get, and here's your codes. These are your codes, again, your medical, your uh, uh, court, uh, excused absence, out of school, suspension, things like that. So get to know those codes. Uh, we're going to try to give you some uh, assistance with those codes, like put a, a key across the top. It's not there yet. So. And if you need to extract, you want to take that information and pull it into an Excel spreadsheet to do some of your own analysis or a PDF file, you use this particular uh, icon up here. You can export it as a, CV, a CSV file uh, or an Excel spreadsheet file or a PDF. So then you can do your own analysis on it. And that comes with every one of our reports. So you can always see, you can always bring those reports out of seats and into um, a analysis tool. Okay, this is your flag report. See all the lovely colors. Remember, red is a really bad one, and that was the 15-day flag reach. And it will keep being red forever until um, they actually come to school, okay? Then it will reset. But if they have 15-day consecutive absences, it's going to be red, 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 red if they keep being absent. Here is your five-day flag reach on that one that we saw, 3-24-2017 since when that five-day flag was reached. Remember I told you once you reach the threshold, it's going to keep – giving you that green if you are an unexcused absence, right? It's going to keep giving you that to show you, all right, they reached the threshold and they're still out. 
you know, they keep doing their unexcused absences. So we want to give you that information. It's important to you. This is for your EM or EC, your court or your medical. We just tell you that this child had a, a medical or a court absence this month. Okay. School campus name. If you're assigned to a campus, you can only see your campus. If you're assigned to a school, you can see multiple campuses. You select the year, you select the month, you can generate the report. All schools, all campuses, if you have that privilege or that permission, you can do all of the, um, the campuses for this particular school. Attendance submission status, again, you're selecting if you have, if you are a school, um, you're going to be able to select your school. Uh, you can select the LEA. You can select the campus. If you have just the campus, you can't do anything except your campus. You've got some range of dates here, same as the other one. The transactions are recording, submitting, recalling, locking, and unlocking. So that's your transactions. If you have all transactions, it'll, oops, sorry, it'll give you the month and when they occurred, when the transactions occurred, and by whom. So whoever logged in to do that. Absence detail report. Again, we're giving you a school and a campus uh, with the appropriate permissions of what you can actually see. You've got an export here to do more analysis. We have the name of the student and the absence code associated with them. This will repeat the student as many times as they had that code. So this unexcused absence was for the same child, but it occurred on the 5th, the 7th, the 1st, the 5th, the 6th. So again, it's repeating the, the child and telling you what the absence was and the description of that absence. Okay. Okay. Troubleshooting and help. Help. Okay. All right, uh, again, we've been around for a while, so there's a couple of things that we've learned. And we want you to know that if the students appear on the roster but they're no longer at your school, you need to contact the sending LEA. They need to exit the student from their student information system, okay? Once they do that, or after they do that, this child will fall off the roster that we get, and we won't see them again the next month. If we see a child on the roster, in the month of March, say, and the LEA did something, you know, fixed their SIS, that child will still be there through May, through the month of May, but will drop off in June, right? Once we see the child, he's in there. So what you need to do is enter a W for the dates that they were no longer there, all right? The W is a fill horizontally, so you can fill out if they were there for half a month, they uh, got uh, taken out of the sending AA SIS, put the W for the, remember, every day has to have a code. So you want to fill that in with your W. The W doesn't make, doesn't, doesn't mean the child withdrew from the school literally. What it is is an indicator to the team here to find out why we have a W there. You know, what is it? Why is the student still showing up when they shouldn't be? So it's not actually pulling them out of school, has no effect on their SIS, on their records, on nothing. It's just an internal indicator. Students not showing up on your roster, same thing. Contact the sending LEA to initiate the transfer to your school through the Fed system. When launching the roster, there are no record or submit buttons. Remember what we went through before? If you haven't submitted the previous month, the current month won't have your record or submit button. When launching the roster, the system does not respond. Remember, you've got to use Explorer 9 or above or Chrome. You can't have, I think it's 8 that really just makes like a little circle turns and turns and turns and nothing happens. The roster is locked and more changes are needed. Again, contact the sending LEA. The LEA will unlock the record for their students only. Make the changes and then submit again. Then submit will take the roster back to the lock status. You can change your password. Once I uh, actually assign you a password, you can change it online and see. And also we have a help file. This is really good because you get my number and my email and we get Jackie's number and her email. So remember help. Remember to go to help when you need help. 
I have a quick reference you can uh, download. I also have a FAQ uh, sheet that you can download. And also we added, just recently, the LEA search. When you're in the roster, you have an LEA code. Not everybody knows what these codes stand for. So your LEA search will take you to an online system that you can search that code so you can find out which LEA you should be calling. If you're a new speech user, please remember me. I talk to the non-pubs all the time. I, um, they call me or they call the Aussie call center and the call center actually forwards that to me. So I'm here too on the any speech questions. And then I'll always uh, CC Yvonne if I do anything for you guys so she knows what's going on. All right, so new users, yeah, we have this, we would definitely love to tell them that. When you, if you've not used Seats before, or if you used a long time ago, you don't remember what's your idea, if you don't remember anything about it, I need you to send to me your username, which is your email address, the school name you represent, and tell me whether you need a school or a campus role. Okay, school again sees all campuses, campus role sees one campus. The campus name, if you want a campus role, tell me which one. And new users must enter attendance from August 2017. Remember that little thing we saw? Previous months has to be done. So when you start your seat, you can have, you're going to have a lot of practice because you're going to actually start the attendance from August. So you could do August, September, October, November. If you start in December, you'll have to catch up with the first five months. Okay. Okay, so at this time, if you have any further seats questions, just utilize the chat um, button to enter your questions. We've been answering some as we go along, um, and I think um, Linda has actually covered most of your questions throughout <laughs> the, um, the presentation as well. So again, um, just know that students on your roster, whether they you need to have them there or you need to have them removed, that is a function that you cannot perform. It's the LEA's task and you should always contact the LEA. Linda cannot remove them for you. Jackie can't remove them for you and neither can I. So you should always check the LEA first because there are, there are functions they need to complete in order to make that happen. If the LEA insists that they've made these changes, but you're still seeing them on the roster, then the LEA needs to put in a ticket into the OSI support tool to have them check it out to see what may be holding this um, change up. So just know that that's out of your control and that's an LEA function. Okay, so um, with that, you can continue to ask your questions. And we're going to 